acceptable in thy sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great, but I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not delay. We like the first part of this verse from the introit. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. These words give us a victorious cry. These words gloss over the fact that we are poor and needy. We don't like to be poor and needy. We like to be victorious. We like to be victorious in the Lord. We like to forget about our own poor and wretched estate. We like to forget that God is my deliverer. We like to forget that we need him to save us. And so the devil takes something that is good. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great, and he causes Christians to focus only on this aspect. I am saying God is great. I think that God is fantastic. Can you see what the main subject is there and how quickly the main subject goes from being God is great to be I think God is great. I think God is wonderful. I have victory in God. And it's not very long before God's people are deceived by the first deception. I am great. And I shall be like God. In our Holy Gospel reading for this morning, we have another one of these instances of Jesus healing a deaf man who was mute. This is nice, as long as we're not the deaf mute. It's nice to see Jesus helping someone else. He had mercy on that poor, wretched sinner. But the reality is, in this gospel lesson, we see how our Lord Jesus Christ works in each and every Christian. We all, by nature, are sinful and unclean. We have sinned against God in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. There's a reason that the divine service starts with the confession of sin. Our sinful nature, our sinful flesh, does everything in its power to forget that it's sinful, to forget that it's dying, to forget ultimately that it needs a Savior. You don't believe me? This is the only time I'll tell you to listen to any preacher on TV. And before too long, you will stop hearing about Jesus and what Jesus has done for the Christian, and you will begin hearing only about what the Christian does and how the Christian needs to live a victorious life and how the Christian can do things and then it will begin suddenly to be how the person does things, how you will have a good life and Christ has been lost altogether and yet Christ comes to you this day not to make you victorious as he is necessarily, Christ comes this day to heal you of your sins unstop your ears that you may hear his gospel so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ he unstops your ears and he loosens your tongue so that you may say God is great so that you may also say but I am poor and needy hasten to me O God you are my help and my deliverer, O Lord, do not delay. He opens your ears that you, upon hearing the gospel, may proclaim his glories, that you may confess your weakness, that you may confess your sins. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But you cannot confess Jesus as Lord. You cannot confess.
confess that God has raised him from the dead without confessing also your own sinfulness, your own desperate need for a Savior, for one who would conquer death where you could not do it, for one who would rise victorious from the grave where you would lie moldering. This, beloved, is what Jesus Christ has done. When he opens your ears, when he loosens your tongue, he has told you about his great good gifts. He has told you about salvation that is in Christ the Lord and none other. He has shown you that he alone is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him. He has put these words in your loosened mouth. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Because he knows this is what you need. You need a helper. You need a deliverer. And he is that helper. He is that deliverer. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? You see what a beautiful thing this is? Christ takes this deaf, mute man away from the crowds and opens his ears and loosens his tongue that this deaf, mute man may be more of a part of the congregation, of the crowd. That he may go in with these people. His ears are being opened. He may continue to hear with them the good news that Jesus proclaims. He may continue with them to praise God, not as an outsider, but now as one of God's people. And so God has taken you aside in the waters of holy baptism. He calls you as his own, as an individual, by your name God calls you. In the waters of holy baptism, he opens your ears. The Spirit of God, which is elsewhere in Scripture, also called the finger of God, is placed into your ears. And you hear this great good news. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Even the youngest child hears this great good news and rejoices in their spirit and in their soul be called no longer a child of wrath by nature, but to now be called a child of God by mercy. So God calls you from the crowd. He heals you. And then he settles the solitary in the home. He calls, gathers, and enlightens you, his dear Christian church, his dear flock, for whom he bled and died. He calls you to follow him into these green pastures, beside this still water where he has prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. He has called you from death to life to be a part of his holy Christian church. And how does he do this? Well, he gives you a pastor. He gives you a pastor that you may hear God's word, not my word. It may at times seem that they are my words, for I have a specific way of blustering on and yelling and screaming at the pulpit. I know, but they're not my words that I'm yelling and screaming at you. They're God's words. And I want to be sure that your ears remain unstopped. So I yell and scream, so even the devil hears what great things God has done for you. So even the devil hears that this place is a place where God's word is proclaimed. This place is a place where God gives his salvation, where God answers our prayers. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire my hurt. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. And so, beloved, this day, Christ again has opened your ears with his holy word. This day, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who called you from death to life, who washed you in the waters of holy baptism, clothing you with his own righteousness, who calls you to this his holy altar, where he gives you...
gives you his own body, his precious blood, that you may taste and see that the Lord is good. This day the Lord Jesus Christ has opened your ears and he has loosened your tongue. And you proclaim life and salvation in Christ alone. And you rejoice that Christ has saved you. And you rejoice that Christ who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion on that great and glorious day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.